gotta say, Kevin Feige is truly one of a kind. One of the greatest producers in Hollywood history, and he ain't even done yet. If he can pull off what he's hoping to do for Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse of Madness, he'll be even more of a boss than he already is. And you wouldn't think that would be possible, but wait until you hear this. So yesterday, there was a rumor circulating that Tom Cruise would play Iron Man in Doctor Strange 2. And some of you asked me to look into it. By the way, some of you were appalled at this rumor, but hear this out. So here's what I found, all right? So as I tweeted uh, like a couple of weeks ago, Kevin Feige, per usual, wants to blow DC's multiverse film out of the water. He, his hits first, it's, a, it's very similar to what he did to Batman v Superman. The Russo brothers outed him. He only greenlit Civil War because of the Batman v Superman announcement. And then he blew it out of the water. And he wants to do it again because he's got an image to, pro to protect as the king of comic book movies. But what do you know? DC is finally getting their act together and have signed not just one, but two Batman to return for 2022's The Flash, Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck. Fan favorites, no less. However, Marvel uh, can't do the same thing. Uh, well, they can with uh, the Spider-Man, which we'll talk about in a moment. But nobody else has played the Avengers because this franchise is still on their first round. So the idea of using actors who almost were cast in these roles is pretty freaking brilliant. Imagine it. Not just Tom Cruise as Iron Man, but what if you could get Joaquin Phoenix, who was almost Doctor Strange? Alexander Skarsgård, who was almost Thor. He even did a costume test. And Emily Blunt, who was almost Black Widow. Didn't she d recently take a meeting with Marvel about Doctor Strange too? We all thought she was gonna play a Doctor Strange uh, associated character, but being Black Widow from a different Earth would be amazing. And on that note, John Krasinski was almost Captain America. Oh my God. The only problem is these are very big name actors, which means they're very busy and very expensive. So how about Garrett Hedlund or Chase Crawford as Captain America, who are all also up for the role, or Timothy Oliphant, who screen tested for Iron Man? Not quite as exciting, but certainly more affordable. Oliphant is amazing in anything that he does. And I have to say, Crawford has been great as a soup on the boys. And I actually now think he would do a pretty good job, especially as an alternate universe Captain America, because of course there would be some humor to that. Uh, you could do a whole thing on what, what part of his body he's most famous for, for America, right? <laughs> Although Chris Evans seems to have all the body, good body parts covered. All right, so the thing is, Tom Cruise has not signed for Doctor Strange 2, but it's still early days for a 2022 movie. Although DC, DC though, I don't know if they should, maybe it should have played their hand, although it leaked. Um, did they leak it? Did it leak on its own? We don't, you know, you'll never know for sure. Uh, but they sure tipped their hand and gave Marvel plenty of time to catch up. And that's what Kevin Feige is doing. Now I can confirm that through my sources that Feige does want other actors to play different versions of the Avengers. Now I had assumed, and I believe some of you had as well, that it would be the same actors, but just playing different versions of their characters. That was coming out of Endgame. And I think we felt, hey, Robert Downey Jr. is dead on this earth, but how about on another earth? So you know, it would be like sliding doors, which was a good movie. But this would be a cost-effective way to have two Iron Mans. Well, you can't have two Iron Mans because, you know, I don't know. I think if they're if they're played by a different actor on one Earth, it has to be different actors on every Earth. I think I can't. You can't have you know, an act, the same actor playing like you can't have like uh, Chris Hemsworth playing two Thors and then Alexander Skarsgård as a third. I mean, you have to set the rule up. It's either the same actor for all of them, or it's always a different actor depending on the Earth. So sorry, actors in the MCU currently who would like to show their acting skills and playing different versions of the character, you don't get to do that because I don't. I mean. Also, we'll never know unless unless someone else like the Russo brothers spills it. If Sam Raimi's like, you know, originally Kevin Feige wasn't going to do this, but then DC announced they were going to have Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck come back, and Kevin Feige put on his thinking cap on how to blow them out of the water, <laughs> how to annihilate them. So it would be cost effective where you could to have two Thors, two Black well, Black Widow's dead too. I mean, like Kevin Feige, <laughs> I, I, that would, we thought that would be another way to bring back Scarlett Johansson. But you get the idea to have two versions of the same character interact with each other because if Feige wants big names, it's good to save money somewhere else in the budget, like in the VFX department. Uh, I've also heard that Feige is talking to Sony about making your dreams come true and having Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield come back to unite the Spider-Men, uh, Batman Flash style. 
he also would like to bring back Hugh Jackman for one last round as Wolverine. Now, again, this is right now Kevin, Kevin Feige's wish list. We'll see what he can actually do. And we all know that Jackman has said that he's done, as the physicality of the role has become overwhelming, and he had an amazing send-off already uh, with Logan. Not a dry eye in the house. I cried both times I saw it. But to fight alongside the Avengers and the MCU at least once, I don't know how Hugh Jackman could resist that. Uh, and he has talked about that that would be nice. I mean, he could just come back if he, I think, I think he could still do the physicality, damn it. But he could also play old, old man Logan, who was in the comics. He never quite got to that version. And I think we'd all allow it. I think we would definitely allow it. I don't know if I'd bring in any, any other X-Men, though, because fans might demand that they stick around. And I think, you know, Foggy wants to recast. He wants to shape the X-Men as he would like them to be. In his, I don't know how the X-Men are going to work in the MCU, to be honest with you, uh, especially if they, you know, if they do the Inhumans route that they did in the recent Avengers video game, because Kamala Khan is definitely coming. Are they going to keep her as an Inhuman? I don't see how you can have Inhumans and mutants, because they're basically the same thing. I know you can in the comics, but you'll notice that in the comics, the X-Men don't particularly play very well with any of the other lines. They always kind of stick to themselves. Avengers vs. X-Men was not particularly good. The only person who's really ever crossed over, I think, effectively is Wolverine, because um, he's a superstar, and I think to some degree Storm. And of course, we'd like to see her, and uh, well, not anymore. I think Black Panther 2 has other important things to accomplish now. But I, I think, you know, it would be really hard. Although part of me would love to see Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen come back, and maybe Rebecca Romaine, but that's it! That's it! <laughs> it's tough. These are wonderful toys. Uh, however, while Disney is Uncle Scrooge rich, they, can they afford to do this? They'd like to make some money off of the movie, right? This can't, I mean, I don't know. I don't think they want this to be a, like a, I mean, you don't want to do it like for charity, right? Disney's like, it's impossible to turn a profit on this, but it, like we made movie history. But I don't know, maybe it would make, maybe it would become the highest, it would unseat Avengers Endgame as the highest grossing film of all time. It would be pretty amazing. And also I have to say, I think that some of these actors should bring their prices down a little bit to be, you know, good sports, to make fans happy and to be part of the MCU. And hey, if it works out and they are fabulous as different versions of the characters, they could get alternate universe spinoff movies and then they can bring their price back up then. Think about the long game, famous actors. Think about the long game. Uh, how amazing would it be for the Avengers we all know and love to meet the Avengers we almost got? Oh my God! It would give new meaning to the term multiverse of madness, as in this is so crazy, it's awesome! It'll also give us memorable moments right up there with Avengers Endgame, and those moments were pretty damn memorable. So what do you think of this idea? It's, a, it's if, again, if Kevin Feige can actually do this, we'll have to come up with some kind of award to give him, because it would be the coolest, he'd be like, like, like well, I don't want to say the new Stan Lee because that seems sacrilegious, but he'd be right up there with him. I mean, he would just be, it would be amazing. He would be a god amongst amongst Hollywood. It, I, I think that it would be like the biggest mic drop of all time. Now, DC for... Um, the Flash movie, I've heard they would like to have Michelle Pfeiffer. They're thinking, you know, the plan is that Michael Keaton will come back into the regular continuity and help Batgirl get, you know, her training, you know, and, and, and making like a Batman Beyond kind of situation. So, I mean, that's going to just annoy people. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, the Flash, the Flash movie ain't done either. Uh, but I'm curious as to what you think of Kevin Foggy's plan for the Multiverse of Madness and how do you think it would stack up to uh, DC's The Flash? Would it be you know, Batman v Superman versus Civil War all over again. I hope not. I think, I still think Ezra Miller is a problem. I think he's really a weight on the Flash film. No matter how many awesome people they stick on one side of the, of the balance, you know, the, the scales, Ezra Miller is a heavy weight to, to uh, balance out. So, but I don't know, maybe let's see what uh, Zack Snyder can do with him in the Snyder Cut. Again, we've no, we still need to understand why Snyder cast him. And all of Snyder's other casting has been amazing. So again, Maybe it's, maybe like so many other things, it was Joss Whedon's fault. All right, so again, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.